what's up guys it's tmd back with another 7-eleven combini food review hope you're all doing well just come back from the combini just right now the weather is so hot right now i'm dreading the next few weeks it's summertime like literally in about a week or so two weeks so let's kick off this um food review combini review with this new coffee that I got actually guys uh, big shout out to Dan Lim as well um, I have seen this brand before um, it's called Ayataka Cafe Ayataka Cafe they do like um, a green tea flavor um, it's really good guys uh, I've just discovered this check out the branding check out the, uh, the, the design it's ribbed and it's like a basically like a very milky coffee I'll tell you what I should do guys before I do a bit of Tom Cruise a bit of cocktail and all that shit just what you, just what you need on a hot day like this I've got the air coming right now anyway bottoms up this is so good guys I have a feeling though I have a weird feeling that this may be um, soy milk. That, that, that's what it tastes of. It, it's actually it's called uh, hoji hoji cha latte. But for me, it's got like this very um, smooth taste on it. It's so good. I love the branding. I love that old Japanese teapot on it. Good grab as well. It's a shame they don't sell that um, in bigger bottles, but it is Japan. So everything's small out here, right? I've got some bangers today, guys. Uh, I'm gonna be trying and reviewing 7-Eleven foods daily. Because I actually, the store near me, there's two, and they're both kind of the same distance. So if you want me to like film the journey there, I can do that. But um, the one that I mainly go to is it's about a 10 minute walk, and it's nice. There's loads of cool stuff to see as I go up there, and the staff are really friendly. The first one is this one. A little bit pricey, man. This is their chicken, egg, vegetables, and chili sauce. I've uh, never tried this before. Uh, it's a little bit pricey. It comes to 375 yen, 260 calories. It's got this cool, like, flip thingy that you can, you know, how you, how you open it, so you can probably eat it like that, like a, like a taco or something. It's got loads of boiled eggs in there. I don't know what what veg they've got in there, vegetables. We, we, we will dissect this very carefully when we start eating it, guys. But um, this is kind of like their premium stuff. They, Like I said in my last video, they have like basic sandwiches, but they also do um, like kind of upgrade premium stuff, which is a little bit pricey, but hey, hey, ho, hey, ho. Next item, guys. This is something that I have been eating since the time I've been in Japan, and I love it. I friggin' love it, man. And it's this. It's, it, it doesn't look like much, right? It's a pork sausage. Um, we would say like a sausage roll in the UK. Uh, it comes with mustard. You can put it in the microwave. By the way, if in Japan, they do have microwaves. You just ask the staff if you want it heated up. I'm cool eating it cold. It doesn't really bother me. Um, this comes to 200 yen, around about 200 yen. Um, not bad. These are a lot better than hot dogs out here. I don't like. I don't like Japanese hot dogs so much because. I don't know. I just find them. If anybody who lives in Japan 
knows about those hot dogs. They're really greasy. I'm not a huge fan of them. And they're a bit messy to eat. I don't know why, but these ones are different because it's like a, it's a Japanese thin sausage. Right? The Pierre de la Restance we're going to be shouting out uh, Nakamoto Ramen. This is a yakisoba meal. I have done videos, I think, on Nakamoto Ramen. There's one in Omiya, Shinjuku. There's one in... I think there's one in Ikibukuro. So basically, uh, this ramen chain is owned by this crazy guy. And for some reason, their popularity has just blown up the chain, Nakamoto Ramen. It's one of the, quote, spiciest ramens you can eat in Japan. Um, there is some crazy Japanese guys that have done level 14. I think I've done level... I can't remember if it was 10 or 11. At that time when I tried it, uh, it was really hot. But now I'm kind of used to it. I kind of think, ah, oh, maybe I, sh I should try 14. But I have seen this Japanese guy do this. It's not really a food challenge. When you go to Nakamoto Ramen, I think the max load is na level 9, I think, or 10. But if you want to get like a more spice level, you have to ask the count staff to uh, make it hard. It's one of those ramens where, how do I explain this? They use like chili powder, right? It's like a, I don't know, it's more like a chili, small chili flake. So when they add more, like making it hotter, you end up like, it's kind of weird to describe, it's kind of like, chili eating just like a fucking chili powder in soup uh as well like like with indian food or thai food um you know you have a chili at the side and you bite on it to make it hot or whatnot but i don't know i'm not really a keen fan of having shit loads of this powder put into it because it's just it just tastes like i don't know like um semolina almost right if you if you get what i'm saying but um, yeah, anyway, divulging this this guy has been um, doing work with Nissin noodles and doing collaborations with 7-Eleven. This isn't a ramen, this is a yakisoba. I can't... I know there's dashi in there of, of some kind. But if you're ever in Japan, check it out. Uh, if, if you want to meet me, we can hang out. Ah. Uh, this is like a shrimp flavor. Try and read this. Yeah, it's, a, it's like a yakisoba with shrimp. Hot water, five minutes. E easy to make. Look, I, I will, I'm not going to film me making this shit, man. I'm just going to make it and then cut the video and come back in. But yeah, this guy, they, they've had like maybe. I don't know, like seven different kinds of their own ramen being produced at 7 Um here, here it is, the old donga. <laughs> so, as you can see here, all of these sausage bread, oh, in Japan, these breads. I don't know, man. This bread, it's all right. It's quite chewy. That's why they recommend putting it in the microwave to soften it up. But you don't have to. Um, inside, you know, it's got a bit of a Dijon mustard. I do find Japanese sausages, they're not my favorite thing to eat because um, they just taste processed but saying that this is really good 
Ne? The mustard is not overpowering. Yeah. It's good. The bread is decent, man. Mm. I could eat these all day long. It's a really popular filling. Is that uh, the bakery that um, I made a video on saffron? They do that kind of style sausage, but they do like one that's like shirazu, Sh shirozo. Sorry, <laughs> the Spanish sausage. It's quite spicy, but it's in more of like a puff pastry, like a flaky pastry. It's really good. Right, recommend. I recommend you guys getting that hot dog thing, that um, sausage roll thing. It, it, it's good. Anyway, let's divulge, move on to this epic sandwich. This looks rather delightful. Um, I suppose because there's a lot of filling in here, it's kind of difficult to <laughs> can't get this thing out there you go there you go so there you go guys it's got some nice bits of chicken moist I've got that chili sauce almost tastes like a, it's like Mexican or some sign some kind mmm Yeah, I'm getting like a Mexican spice vibe. It's not hot. Not hot at all. The bread, soft. The weird thing is, I don't know where the vegetables are. <laughs> where are the vegetables, man? What are the vegetables? Try to do this carefully, guys. Cause my egg's gonna. What? Is that lentil? I don't know what that is, man. That's a mystery. Hmm. You can you can tell why this is a little bit pricey because it's a better product. Hmm. Like Mexican chicken. Delightful. Mm. Now, this is my point. Sandwich fillings. That's why I like to eat these things, right? Because spice of life, man. I, I like to try different things. But when you start um, buying, as I said in the last video, the non-generic filling, the price of goes up. In England, we have all kinds of fillings, man. But let me know in the comments, what's your favorite sandwich filling? I think from um, my last video, We had some comments coming in. Oh, thanks guys for watching, by the way. Oh. I think it was Danny. Talking about egg mayo and stuff like that. I mean, I, I am a sucker for sandwiches. The place that I want to go to, and if anybody's out there watching and has been to this place, is that... Um, it's that pastrami deli shop in New York. It's like incredibly famous. And it looks amazing. And you know, there's also, 
I can't believe this. Like, so, like, the Halal Boys, if you know who the Halal Boys are, they they started off in New York as, um, what do I say? They were like a food van thing. And now they've branched out. They have chains in um, England now. Can't believe it. I want to try that. Halal boys, it's basically like kebab, rice, vegetables. It looks so good. That will never come to Japan, unfortunately. But man. Anyway guys, let's get this yakisoba out of the way. So here we go guys, all prepped up, ready. Man, <laughs> this looks amazing. Uh, when I was using the sauce, or the um, like stock base straight off I knew it was Nakamoto ramen the smell the taste it's just delicious the last pack I, I got two sachets one's the kind of mixing sauce and the last one is the shrimp powder it's like a gives it that obviously that kind of aquatic <laughs> vibe taste to it um, I don't know how hot this is gonna be I do know that these, these ramens are hot, but anyway, let's uh, dive in. <clears throat> these noodles as well, they're kind of thick. They're chewy noodles. It's got some veg in here. It's like mushroom, carrot, leek, some dried space food meat the mass mm. yeah, delicious mm. I'm not um a huge like shrimp fan but This is really nice. Um, you've got like these little bits of meat in there as well. Space food. Spice level. It's not that hot, guys. It's a little bit of a kick, but not insane. The flavor is in there. The Nakamoto style <clears throat> stock. Which I can taste a lot of miso in here. It also reminds me of like takoyaki when that shrimp paste has been added. <clears throat> but man, you get a lot for 230 yen. It's a crap load of noodles, man. This is Japanese instant food, man. This is this is better than some foods that I've had at actual restaurants and whatnot. So as I'm eating, just do some shout outs on my socials. We got Lars from Sweden, man. Thanks for watching Lars. Lars is quite active on my um, YouTube. Danny at Full Moon Studio. I have always liked egg salad sandwiches. We have a place here that puts bacon in them and it's totally young. Adam Fong from Australia, what's up bro? Got Lance as well. <clears throat> uh, John, Bad Grendels. On my Facebook, people are getting quite active on some of my posts. The, the usual gang. <laughs> well, what happened was, um, 
we're talking about Instagram <clears throat> and when you press like your search button it obviously Instagram kind of works out what you like to look at so mine one of my Instagram accounts is just food <laughs> food 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 but actually I was watching an interesting um, oh, I forgot the name of the channel that's on YouTube but they, they're like they do they have like a photography channel it's quite big um, They were talking about um, about how Instagram has basically you know, pissed off a lot of the cut real photographers. It, Instagram's a weird one because yeah, I, I totally get that man. Like I totally get why photographers are getting pissed about it. Totally get it. I'm trying to find that channel name. Uh, Tony and Chelsea Northrup, check them out, and their latest video is called Instagram Ruined Photography. It's really weird because obviously it's open to anything, right? It's open to anything, but like I don't think it's a a photography app anymore unfortunately and you know I find it like I'm not like super hardcore on it but I know a lot of people like women females even males who do all their fashion shit bikini crap tits and legs ass hanging out I mean, I, I can't just say like, oh, Instagram needs to be made specifically for for photographers because now it's open to anything, right? But I found I spend less of my time on that app looking at photography and being sucked in by other crap. So, and the issue with it is that because so many people are on it and there's so much content out there, it's kind of um, hit or miss on stuff that I want to look at or stuff that is out there that I should be looking at but can't find it because it's just so rammed with people and images and videos and whatnot. It's like, obviously I do illustrations, so I, I, look, I, look, I like to look at a lot of art stuff, right? It's insane how much content is on there for art. I like that. I like it, man. It's but for some for some other stuff, nah. As much as I like Japanese women and looking at, you know, <laughs> the finer things of a woman's, you know, features, whatnot. There's so many Japanese chicks that are on there doing Instagram lives and doing stupid crap. And, it's hitting Instagram hard and it's like if I type in a girl or see a girl that I like oh, it'll just put it in my searching and it's just like thousands of chicks man <laughs> it's like, I don't, yeah as much as I like looking at women I am a male 
that shit on there on Instagram is too much for me. It's too much of it. And this brings me back to the point of like, if these models were doing like real, well, they are, they are doing portrait stuff. But it just seems to be like a, a self promotion thing now for it. You know, photography can be anything, right? But I don't know. I'm just not a huge fan of it. It's too much shit on there. And literally, you can be stuck. Like me and my friend, we're, we're always talking about. We're always sharing people's stuff that we like because it's good to share information like that with with friends. Um, like there was a guy who did some like three D sculpture stuff, like like sci fi fantasy. It was absolutely incredible. Uh, I mean. That shit's cool, but like, I mean, you, you could spend all day looking at that shit, man. <laughs> all day, it's just too much. But anyway, we're, we're going off a sidetrack here. My opinions about this Nakamoto shrimp yakisoba. Soba. Good. Delicious. Filled the hole in my stomach. I start work now. It's going to keep me going for about three, four hours. 220 yen. That's a meal right there, man. So if you're in Japan, you want a quick, fast meal. By the way, you can actually use hot water at the convenience store, so you can actually, you know, make your ramen there. Some places now, they they actually have seating areas, so you can actually sit in store and eat it, which is cool. But yeah, that was today's review, man, of 7-Eleven. Tomorrow we're going to be doing something a little bit different. And uh, thanks for watching, guys. Big shout going out to all the fans, the crew, the people on FB, IG. <laughs> Big up, man. Bless up. Peace.